Hey everybody, this is Christian Buckley doing another MVP Buzz Chat, and I'm talking today with Kai. Hello. Hi, Chris. Nice to meet you. It's great to have you here. And for folks that don't know you, who are you, where are you, and what do you do? Well, so I'm uh, Kai Zauter. I uh, live in Switzerland, in Zurich. Um, I um actually a data engineer, so, but also uh, the DBA is a kind of mix of it. Uh, I, um, for quite some years, I used to implement uh, the, the SQL Server solutions. Uh, so also with PowerShell with DBA tools. And um, in the last two years, I also have been, um, I also had uh, uh, created some conferences, like uh, there was a the co-organizer of uh, Power BI Fest that mm -hmm. happened uh, uh, to, um, one half years ago, so the, the November before the, the last month, November, um, um, just last September, I also created uh, the, the database, which was uh, a conference uh, um, that focuses on the German part of Europe. Mm -hmm. uh, so it means uh, Germany, Austria, Switzerland, and Liechtenstein. So uh, we had one track for German speaking people. So those, most of those uh, talks were actually uh, spoken in German to people that are not so uh, fluent in English. They just could listen to it uh, with ease or if people don't understand any English, they just can't listen to it in, in German. Yeah. Uh, additionally, also uh, founded the uh, Azure Data User Group uh, data TGIF uh, here in Switzerland, which is an online community uh, uh, in which anybody can actually uh, attend to for free, uh, just with your Microsoft uh, Teams. Mm -hmm. So that's, I would say, in short, about me. <laughs> are you, uh, are things kind of getting back to normal? Are you seeing more, doing more in person things? Or are you still kind of hybrid and still doing more digital? Um, I lost your voice somehow. I can't hear oh. you anymore. Uh, let me check. How about now? Are you hearing me yet? I don't hear you anymore for some reason. Hmm. Uh, let me hang on. Let me pause this. All right. I'll ask the question again. Uh, so do you, are you doing more in person? Are you seeing more events popping up? Are you still doing a lot of, you know, hybrid or digital? Um, uh, oh, I, some type of hybrid. Uh, I work for an insurance in Switzerland. Um, here we work basically uh, both uh, uh, based, that means in the office and also working from, working from home. This is quite a hybrid uh, working environment here. Yep. Yeah, so for events and stuff, are they starting to, like, uh, like our user groups, are they all digital now, or are you starting to get back in person? That's exactly. So, so also DataBash uh, was uh, digital only. So it's just, uh, uh, there's a, the idea actually came up with the, the pandemic, uh, when everybody had to uh, stay at home. I thought uh, the data user group, for example, for data TGIF, which is for really for the data TGIF, which they thank God it's Friday, so that we also could uh, connect together, hang out together, uh, especially for people that uh, are alone in the office, because back then I was in a small uh, consultancy uh, company that uh, we didn't have uh, much colleagues, but also were a bit uh, kind of disconnected with the other people, with, with, uh, with the community. So I felt like uh, I should uh, create a platform uh, which uh, we actually can connect with each other, uh, at least online, when it was not possible during the pandemic, when really there was a shutdown as well in, in, in Switzerland. Yeah, I know that we're we're having the whole discussion. I'm sure you're having the same thing with our user group of like we have a physical location from one of our sponsors, but most people are just dialing in. They don't want to deal 
with, with we just got accustomed to not having to drive across town and deal with traffic and and family issues and organizing let's just dial that in um so while events are actually starting to pick up at least here in the u.s and so the numbers are growing again but i think user groups it sounds like it's pretty consistent around the world that a lot of groups have just made the decision digital works for us let's just stay digital exactly this is also why i plan to remain digital this way because uh, switzerland is, is fairly small we have a lot of mountains in between our places so if you want to, to travel to not another city uh that would be fairly close in the united states uh, but it's still like a uh, two hours drive uh, for a meeting like this this is not really something something people look forward to so this is more easy to connect and uh, also decided to have it in English, so people from Switzerland uh, also can, can uh, connect to it, because we have actually four languages in Switzerland. So we have German, we have French, we have Italian, and they have much uh, small, uh, it's also a language, but it's uh, not so known, this is only like it's spoken by uh, about 100 people, uh, 100,000 people, sorry. Uh, so that means uh, it's, um, it's, it's, it's because English is really the lingua franca uh, of the IT, it's more easy to communicate that way. And uh, along that, we also get, of course, uh, people from the, around the world, like uh, from the United States. Uh, we had uh, people from South Africa, from UK, Germany, of course, Switzerland, of course, too, France, India. Even once, uh, once at a time, we had it from Singapore, which is actually yeah. uh, quite some uh, time difference here. Middle, so middle of the night. Really yeah. 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 That's always, I always love those meetings where there's somebody, they're like, you know, I'm here based in the US. I'm talking with somebody who's, you know, uh, uh, up really late in Europe. And then I've got some people on from Singapore, or Australia. Exactly. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. rough. There is no time that works for, for that. Yeah. yeah, there's there's somebody that's always losing sleep. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, so so what are you what are you passionate about right now? What are the kind of the, your big topics that you are writing about, speaking about? So my specialty is actually a SQL Server. So it's uh, what uh, I do is also to try to 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 help people to to move uh, SQL Server into Azure. So uh, for example, also have a session. Uh, in which I explain people how to create a uh, virtual machine on uh, Azure. And I created this code actually before, before Bicep was a thing. Uh, so, so it was actually, uh, it was back then, it was still in alpha or uh, beta status. Um, so in, if PowerShell and uh, a lot of people uh, in the DBA space know uh, PowerShell already, so I think, uh, thought that this is something that uh, is quite feasible also for smaller companies, for smaller solutions. Uh, this is something that uh, uh, is pretty easy to understand and to, to um, show this uh, in the session how to deploy a SQL Server a VM to Azure. So for example, you just have a, something in, a, in code, so you actually also can delete the VM if you don't need it anymore. You can now reuse the code again, of course. So you have a, a pretty quickly, like a, a bit more than half an hour, maybe uh, for 45 minutes, you have uh, the, the, the whole setup uh, again, uh, including uh, uh, a safe connection to the VM or with uh, Azure Bastion. So this is also getting de deployed. You always get installed uh, the, the software you need uh, on the VM. So uh, anything you want. And also you have a, a network drive on it. So you also can um, restore the backups you maybe have uh, directly on your instance. Mm -hmm. I always like to uh, uh, remind people that so I, I was starting, I got my MVP initially in SharePoint and a lot of it became a real phenomenon doing like the SharePoint Saturday events, but that whole model, uh, it was already a big event series in the SQL world. That's where it came from. The SQL Saturday model was we modeled our events after. Um, okay. And uh, I think those are still, up and going. I've seen a few, not to the level, of course, with pandemic, um, 
but uh, they're starting to, to pick back up again. Um, one thing I was like, so you're still you know, a relatively new MVP. I always like to ask, like, because I'm sure people are reaching out to you asking questions. Well, you know, uh, people that want to learn about an MVP or potentially like, what do I need to do to become an MVP? What, what's your guidance? What do you tell people? Well, uh, um, actually, I, I don't think uh, you really can become an uh, MVP or you can really plan for it. Uh, I didn't really plan for it. Uh, I just did what I had felt with uh, to do something that I like. Uh, also, it's something I'm really passionate about uh, because I think uh, if you uh, become a, uh, if you want to become a MVP, then it's, that should be not really a direct goal. Uh, or uh, let's put it that way: uh, if you really have the fun to do it, you can do it. If you are not really enjoying it, uh, then on the, in the long run you won't be able to do so because it's uh, really uh, a lot of work. Um, so, so, for example, if you uh, to, to do a conference, to organize a conference, and uh, last year, for example, for for a database, uh, almost every second uh, week we had meetings to, to organize the, the the conference for more than half a year. So, it's, uh, if you really uh, want to do this, something you have to stick to it, and. Uh, I was in the end still, uh, I didn't expect uh, to become uh, MVP actually. So, so it's, um, uh, it just happened basically. So, so it's, it's uh, of course, it's, it's nice to have it and to, to, to be part of the community and to really proud of this community as well. But uh, I don't think you really can plan for it. It's something that you really, really, really have to be passionate about and you, uh, you really want to do it. So, uh, if you don't do this, then it's impossible. I, I I completely agree with that. And it's why you hear from so many MVPs. I say again and again that even if I didn't have the MVP, I'd be doing the same stuff because exactly. it's my hobby, hobby. It's what I'm passionate about and, and sharing what I learn and going and digging in and answering questions for people and connecting people like that's so if you're already doing those things the only thing i would add is like uh, yeah because i agree there are there are people who have stated that it's my goal to become an mvp and they follow that for years and aren't successful and doing that it, it's when you have it i always tell people it's like it's like well just just do it get it and do this it's like don't do it because you're trying to become an mvp do it for the right reason exactly and if, uh, if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't happen for you, you'll still have all the benefits of networking, of making friends, of helping people exactly. and learning, you know. So what's the harm in that? Exactly. This is the, 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 the point uh, I also see is if you're driven to, to become an MVP, I, uh, I think it's more, much more likely you will fail. That's uh, that's. It's something you really uh, you have to, to to like to do. I also like to connect with people, to interact with people. Uh, also, this is actually uh, also the the first the uh, why I created those events in the first place. Mm -hmm. Is uh, this uh, this is also to 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 just uh, have the connection to to people across the world, whether it is from the United States, uh, in Asia, in in Africa. Uh, that's, that's really great. Uh, I'm also really proud of this community, so that we actually really are able to communicate from the United States to Singapore to Japan to uh, uh, South Africa, and so that's uh, that's something I really really uh, like to see. Yeah, I agreed. It's yeah, that's it's it. it I was trying to explain this to my wife too about uh, some friends that I have. You know, uh, that was on you know, some late night phone calls in their early morning. Um, exactly. uh, and I was like, Hey, look, I've got friends around the world. So it's, you know, and, and making time to talk with people and stay in touch. And I mean, it's, it's important because, you know, sometimes they need help. Sometimes I need help, you know, with things and reaching out. It's great to have kind of follow the sun friends that, you know, at any time, day or night, Hey, there's somebody I could reach out to, to help solve a problem that I'm struggling with. Yeah, exactly. Well, exactly. Kai, well, I really appreciate your time. For folks that want to reach out, connect with you, like what are the best ways to reach you? There are basically two ways. Um, I have a LinkedIn profile. 
to tell you, can you contact me. So, uh, PM is open here. And uh, I also have a, a community email address uh, on which you can contact me. It's just k at uh, kmdata.com. So it's, uh, it's another possibility. Um, I also have a Mastodon uh, account and also Twitter. Great. And I will provide all the links. Of course, you can find that out on my blog and on Buck the Planet okay. and on YouTube. So I'll post it all there so you can reach out to Kai. So really appreciate your time. It's great talking to you. Thank you. Same to you. Ah!